So I've got another question that came in from a Sync Edge member, and this is a really common situation, so I also wanted to make a YouTube video for you guys. Um, this member is asking, uh, one of the libraries that's in Sync Edge also distributes music from another library. So it's basically sub-publishing uh, music from another library. And both of them are accepting direct submissions. So you could submit to the sort of bigger company that has this one, or you can go to the uh, sub-publisher um, and directly submit to them if you'd want to. So he's asking, is there an advantage to applying one over the other? And do they both split the publisher share in an arrangement like that? So. The answer is yes for the sub-publishing side of things when a, let's say, a major library like, um, I don't know, you could say Extreme Music or Megatracks or one of those bigger companies, when they have an entire catalog that they bring on board and start distributing and representing, they will usually split that publisher share with that company. So I guess 50-50 is probably the norm. I'm sure it varies depending on the size of the catalog and depending on the, you know, who values the catalog more, how how valuable that adding that catalog to the bigger company is to that bigger company. So there's many variables, but 50-50, you can probably usually find that most of those deals, they're going to split their publishing 50-50 um, on that. So the question will be, uh, you kind of have to have a little bit of a, a deeper dive here. So um, let's call this library A, which is the bigger one that, that publishes and, and distributes library B, okay? So if you want, if library A's clients and placements is really where you want to go, then you probably want to submit directly to library A because you don't need to have a sub-publisher in the way where you're basically cutting, you know, you're going through them, getting into the, 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 the primary place that you really want to be. So you really want to go directly to the company that you want to work with. However, library B might also be a company that has its own uh, sub-publishing uh, catalogs that it represents, or maybe the clients that it has and the placements that it's getting is a little bit more your style, a little bit more into the kind of music that you make. So maybe this is a company that when you work with them, not only will you get their clients, but you'll also be published over with Library A's clients, right? So you see, understand how you need to know where you want to go to decide which one you want to work with. So I would definitely look at these two different companies and, and really uh, go through their client list and go through their placements and their work and what they've gone, uh, what they've actually gotten placed and decide, is this really matching up with the style of music and the type of music and the quality of music that I can compose? Um, you know, when I got first started into this business, I had my music uh, distributed in, let's see, it was mega tracks, five alarm music, position music, um, I think 615 Music was another one. And these are all pretty big pretty big companies. And I got into all of them through sub-publishers, actually in through a sub-catalog, um, essentially kind of a, um, I guess basically a catalog, not even a library, but basically signing on to a catalog that then got distributed by these big boys. So I can't tell for sure what their arrangement was. Like, was it a 50-50 split? I'm just assuming that's what I've heard from many people who do those kind of deals, but I don't know specifically what they were. But for me, you know, getting directly into Megatracks would be next to impossible because I didn't really have a contact there. I didn't really know anybody there. And definitely in the beginning of my career, my music was not that great. I mean, just to be honest with you guys, I was at the beginning stages of learning how to produce music. So I was definitely on the beginner side. So working with this catalog, which brought me on board as a beginner and kind of coached me through it and helped me, you know, get into this industry, it got me into those bigger catalogs and started to just, you know, jumpstart my entire career. So that's certainly a way to go. And I think for most of those bigger companies, like the ones I mentioned, um, it would be very rare for them to directly take you on as a composer. For the most part, they're in the business of finding and gobbling up kind of smaller, um, not smaller, but just other catalogs bringing up into their you know portfolio and then distributing them that way because you get a lot more bang for your buck right like just imagine how much work it takes to bring you on board as a single composer you know you're, you're sending them 10 tracks at a time even if you're doing it once a month which is a good pace it's one album a month it's like okay but if they go find a catalog that has 25 albums all ready to go they have to do the same amount of paperwork right it's basically just one contract same with you one contract but they get 25 albums from them okay and maybe also what they're getting is all of their composers there might be a collection of composers that are constantly submitting to that catalog so they're getting the quantity that we individual composers just cannot do for a large company like that so it's just word of the wise you know where where you really want to go also keep in mind i always want to remind everybody of this that just because those are some of the bigger name uh, libraries out there um, it doesn't mean that they're going to perform the best for you okay so i just want you to know even though they are the sort of I don't know, the Universals and the Sonys, they're kind of the bigger names that people all recognize in the production music world. That does not mean that your music, if you get it in there, will automatically do better. In fact, 
many libraries that I've done the best in have been pretty small boutique ones that are not huge name ones, but they just figured out how to get a really powerful relationships, excuse me, with reality TV show pro uh, producers and creators. And they basically said, please just exclusively come use our music. And when they had those relationships built up, my music flew off the shelf and the royalties started coming in much faster than at the larger companies that I was at. Granted, some big opportunities came to me through those larger companies. Always grateful for that. It's not like one's good or one's bad. But just just don't have that misconception that it's like, you know, in the artist world, we think of like, you know, I want to sign with a major label because the major labels are going to, what, guarantee you success? Because most major artists that get signed to major labels do not succeed. And a lot of them get shelved, in fact, and they get sabotaged and their, their music doesn't even come out. So it's just kind of a myth that a lot of producers hold on to that they, I've, I hear it a lot of like, I, I got to get my music into extreme music. If I don't get into extreme music, then I just don't really have a career. That's just my goal. And I kind of want, I want to help people to zoom out just a little bit and realize that like, I wish you all the best. Go for it. If extreme music is where your, heart, your heart's at, go for it. If you can't get in, if they don't accept you, if you can't find a way into that company, again, that is not your career. Just because you can't get into that one particular company or that pretty big company, that's just one point of your journey. Your career is the entire world, right? Your, your career is much bigger than that. So try not to get so pigeonholed and like, I need to get car commercial placements or I need to get working with this or I want a placement on that particular TV show and that's all I really want. Because when you start doing that, you really do limit the chances of you really succeeding, to be honest with you, because you know how likely is it you're gonna get a particular placement on a particular TV show that you like? It's possible and I never wanna be the person to say you can't do it. Of course you can do it. It's very unlikely though, right? So you're, because you're basically trying to pinpoint a tiny, tiny little target which has many moving variables outside of your control to get to that target. Whereas if you zoom out a little bit and, so, and realize, you know what, I'm just here to create high quality music, license it with great companies, big or small, right? But that I feel are giving me a time of day, time of day giving me great uh, communication, they value me, they're pulling me on board, they're giving me briefs, they're answering my calls, answering my emails, and I'm seeing some signs of results with them. If you do that, then you immediately open up the amount of potential opportunities you can have with your music and with your sync licensing career. So try not to get too pigeonholed on it. So I hope that answers the question of who to submit to. You gotta decide that really actually for yourself and then really determine which path makes the best sense for which kind of company that you wanna work with. So hopefully that helps.